So I probably should have done this earlier in my programming career, well, if you could call it that. <laughs> but um, I decided that now would be a good time to start some sort of a portfolio of what I've been doing, whether it's some sort of log showing what I've done for the past week or so, or maybe some kind of demonstration each time I complete something. What I have right now is an example of the latter in which I've created a <coughs> I've created a voice modulator program in which I can pass through audio through say a microphone and then export it to something else and I can perform a variety of effects on it. Um, the main feature of this program is that there's a um, Fourier transform. Um, I use an FFT algorithm to be able to decompose the wave um, and I can perform a variety of effects as soon as I have a uh, band of frequencies which is pretty much the core of DSP, but this is my implementation. Um, <clears throat> so right here, this is a visualizer. So say if I just turn this on right now, and without any effects, all is, this is going to do is it's just going to spit out what I've imported. So this is it. And as you can see, there's all the frequencies at the current time. So each bar within this visualizer, even, rather each vertical white bar in here, represents 1000 Hz. Um, I could have actually done this on a logarithmic scale, but I didn't really feel like it. <laughs> um, on the right side here, I have the um, all the effects and handling them. I have three different um, categories in which I can put these effects under, and that's just within the stages of the um, of the processing. So I have certain effects that I've already added. Um, it won't be very difficult to add new ones whenever I want to because within the um, within my Java program I have a um, an interface in which I can just very easily create a class and um, and that implements it. Um, so this simple echo here is it just does what it does. And I have control over a few things, like the peak. If I ever am hitting the uh, the max amplitude for the sort of device, then I can just have the peak at a lower value. But there's some loss because it just cuts anything out above that, just as any peaking would do. The decay time. I have pretty easy control over. Um, anything really above around three seconds, though, is not going to sound that good. I also have a um, I have a reverse reverb effect, which basically um, has this really cool effect that I personally really, really like. I also have a simple pitch, simple shifter. pitch shifter, so I can increase, decrease the pitch. There's a lot of loss in the actual audio, so it's not going to sound very good. Alright, if I really wanted to, I can just mess around with this. Um, I can go maybe a minor third. If I wanted to sound sad or something, maybe major third, I don't know. If I wanted, if to, I handle, wanted to handle... If I wanted, if to, I handle wanted to handle musical, musical intervals, intervals, then I've created a harmonizer, harmonizer. Which, which I can... I can which I have a matrix of musical intervals within an octave, um, disregarding the perfect unison. So I can harmonize with myself if I'm feeling lonely or something. So there's me, the perfect fifth. Maybe if I want to do a chord, um, or if I just wanted to have just a cluster of certain pitches. I have some preset um, chord 
nice slash intervals that I could use. So major, minor, um, just your regular chords. Oh, wait. No, this is first inversion. Um, if I wanted to sound creepy, stuff like this. Uh, and yeah, that's always fun. So you've probably seen um, this channel thing right here. Um, that's just a simple thing where I can perform certain effects onto audio in parallel. So for example, if I wanted to maybe create something that played my voice and repeated it again, then I can perhaps perform a listener, go onto the main channel, and export it to some and move it to something else, say channel A. Perform a delay effect. And then listen back. And then listen back. I can do stuff, I can like, do this. stuff like this. So I've also implemented presets. Um, so that's what this saving thing is right here. Um, I have a certain preset that I kind of want to show off right now, which is sort of my take of some sort of otherworldly voice. This is it. So you can kind of hear what's going on. Turning that off, um, basically what's going on is I'm using that reverse echo, the reverse reverb that I was talking about before. I have a decay, or a, that shouldn't be decay, that should be like some sort of build-up time, but that's a reverse decay of one and a half seconds. Um, basically, I'm writing this into the pre-channel, or to a different channel, which I've been calling pre. I'm implementing a delay, like what I had just done earlier, and it's the exact same amount of time as the reverse echo. Then I just write this into a different channel, which all that's going to do is I just write it back into the main channel. So I have... Um, an unmodified version of my original voice, so it's a lot easier to understand. Then with the um, with the main channel, I just add in a um, certain preset. I add an echo to it, so there so it sounds a lot more floaty. And I just combine all those channels together. This is the effect that is created. So I can mess around with this. Um, if I was ever play, playing around with my friends, maybe if I wanted to do like some sort of role-playing thing, um, this might help getting into character or whatever.